Welcome. You could say that again. All right, we're excited to have graduation outside and that family and friends can enjoy and share this happy event. We're gonna try to make this as normal as we can, but these are not normal times. Please help us with these few ground rules. I understand we're outside and it's safer than indoors, but at, out of an abundance of caution and for students' safety, we ask that everyone please wear a mask for this hour ceremony. We know it's a pain, but we thank you for your help with this. We have professional photographers who will be taking pictures of the seniors and they will be available for everyone for free within a couple of days. We'll send you a link for the photos and they're royalty free. There are barriers between Excuse me, there are barriers between the students and spectators. Again, this is done with an abundance of caution. Please do not approach the stage or the students. At the end of the ceremony, students will walk to their cars, drive out for the parade, follow the police cars and the fire engines, and be able to drive through town. So, students and their families can come back after the parade for pictures. Again, thanks for your understanding and patience with this as we have tried to figure out this COVID-19 world. I also want to personally thank the community of Homer for helping us keep the community and our children safe. We haven't always agreed on the best way to do this, but when push came to sub, the Homer community stepped up and did what was needed. With that, good evening and welcome to the Homer High School graduation ceremony as we honor and celebrate the accomplishments of the class of 2021. Please join me in welcoming our honored guests overseeing this proceeding. A member of our school board, Mr. Mike, Michael Ilg, current superintendent, John O'Brien, and district communications liaison, Peggy Erkanoff. I would also like to recognize our Homer High School teachers and staff for a job well done. They have worked tirelessly and been flexible, and most importantly, been willing to work face-to-face -face with our students right from the beginning. Right. Let's review our year. COVID, 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 and more COVID. I think I have COVID mitigation plans flowing out of my ears, and I dream of mitigation plans in my sleep. If I never see another COVID mitigation plan, it will be too soon. That being said, the district and the Homer High School staff and myself have gone out of our way and done whatever was needed to make sure our students were in school face to face and safe. I personally would have walked on one leg, had my hands tied behind my back, if that's what it took. We did that and it worked. Was it fun all the time? No, but it was wonderful seeing all those fast mace in the building and being able to greet them in the morning. And it's amazing, I was able to recognize most of the students, even with their mask on. And by the way, I could tell if the students are laughing or not behind those masks, but that is not about the students, that's about the adults. What the real story is, is our students. And our students rock. They are the best students in the state and maybe the best students in the country. They took a bad situation and didn't just deal with it, they thrived. They wore masks, distance, washed their hands, all with good humor and flexibility. They designed 
designed outdoor pec rallies, played sports with mask on, took the ACT, ran for student council, and won a hockey championship and excelled at DDF. They earned national awards, earned scholarships, and took control of their learning all within the parameters of COVID-19. So basically, they learned, lived, thrived, maybe not on one foot or with their hands tied behind their back, but with a mask on, social distancing, <laughs> and sanitizing their hands. They say ad adversity really shows the character of a person. If that's the case, the class of 2021 is full of wonderful young adults, and you should rest assured that when it's time for them to run this country, you'll be in good hands. These students have done great things at Homer High, but that's just an indicator of what they're capable of. Our purpose at Homer High School is to help students gain the skills and experiences that will help them in whatever field they choose, whether they fish, go to college, become a welder, or open their own business. We know they will continue to grow, learn, and amaze us. Seeing how they dealt with COVID, I know they can face whatever life throws at them and not just make it, but thrive. I'm proud of every one of these seniors. It's been a privilege to serve these seniors the last four years. This and a whole lot more is your class of 2021. Now enjoy, enjoy tonight's celebration and I commend you for your efforts that have brought you to this day. And now I would ask everyone to please stand, remove your hats for the singing of the national anthem by the Homer High School Swing Choir arranged by Deke Sharon. Please join me in welcoming the Homer High School Concert Choir as they perform Benediction by John Conahan under the direction of Mr. Kyle Schneider.
it's now my privilege to introduce my former neighbor, one of the most welcoming teachers I know. Every time I go into her classroom, I hear, that's awesome, or I'm so glad you're here. Come in and have a PB and J. When talking to students in her exciting and welcoming voice. This teacher is one who made mittens for students in one of her classes because she wanted to lift their spirits a little when they had to learn remotely. She is one of the reasons we have such a great school and why students want to be in the building. Please welcome Sandra Hudson. my great honor to be presenting tonight. Welcome parents, grandparents, loved ones, those viewing near and far, Superintendent O'Brien, school board member Mike Ilg, and my brilliant colleagues. Tonight we gather on the traditional lands of the Denina and the Supiak to honor the life-saving, pandemic-surviving Homer High School graduating class of 2021. As I was reflecting back on the beginning of our story five years ago in eighth grade U.S. history, I remember the quote in our classroom, we are the hero of our own story. I am here to say, you are the hero of mine. Typically, I would spend one year with you and learn all the stories of our history and some super important states and capitals but our story that year was interrupted by my traumatic brain injury, which robbed me of our fourth quarter together and led to a rather major plot twist where you taught me what it takes to be a hero. While I was in what I call the deep, dark pit of despair and I couldn't see a way out, you showed me the power of small gestures. Your sweet cards, get well videos, thoughtful gifts and visits were the motivation that I needed to do whatever it took to be well enough to attend your eighth grade promotion ceremony and honor you from the sidelines. This was a game changing moment for me because you saw me. It's a moment my messy brain will never forget. Parker Lowney standing up in the bleachers and saying, hey, there's Miss Hudson. And then the tears start squirting out the side of my eyes and Miss Fellows keeps handing the tissue while collectively you saw me. You acknowledged me, and every single one of you hugged me. Your kindness taught me that to acknowledge people, however fragile, can make a real and lasting difference. In fact, it can save someone's life. That's what heroes do, and you did that. You saved mine. You gave me a reason to climb out of the pit. With that in my heart, I knew our story was nowhere near finished, so I did the next logical thing, which was to follow you to the high school. I was cleared to come to work about a month into your freshman year, and your endless patience 
kindness and compassion healed me in ways of summer of medical interventions, surgery, and rehab at the finest medical institutions across the nation could not. You did that. You accepted me where I was at and taught me that you don't have to have everything together to have mutually respectful relationships, messy, forgetful brains included. You taught me to be a better version of a teacher than I ever was before. And you showed me that it's not only okay to be vulnerable, but that vulnerability is a touchstone for building relationships and connections that can and have bloomed with time. We are proof of that. As much, um, oh, sorry. You showed me what it meant to truly invest in people, how to work hard, play hard and laugh hard, and that snacks are a really good basis for a lasting relationship. You also taught me that when a really good idea for a homecoming float doesn't work out, just ditch the wheelbarrow because some ideas are better on paper and that laughing hard can be better than winning. As much as I was grateful for our two years together and how you gently guided me and my brain back to being a teacher your freshman year, I had to prepare myself for the next chapter. You were sophomores now and about to launch into busy academic and social obligations along with all your other various activities. And since I was no longer your teacher, I thought I would become the loud lady in the stands cheering for you and hoped maybe you would say hi to me from time to time in the hallway. But instead, you came and sat next to me when I was in the stands by myself and you did more than acknowledge me. You included me. You showed me that inclusion is powerful and investing in people is important. And that's what heroes do. And well, snacks. Lunchtime check-ins became regular and you even went along with my idea to construct the Eiffel Tower for our homecoming float out of pool noodles and aluminum foil, and we didn't win that year either. Uh, with the rigorous academic schedule of your junior year, your lives became even busier, and yet when our paths crossed, you took the time to stop and look me in the eye and have a conversation even when it might make you a tad late for practice or class because you were my heroes and you were willing to invest your time in me and you knew those moments brought me joy. Even in your most challenging academic year, you set up an aiding rotation so one of you was always with me in my classes and you model to the freshmen just how meaningful teacher-student relationships can be and that patience and kindness are powerful tools for everyday heroes. You showed me that even on the days your brain is at its messiest, laughing hard not only makes everything okay, but able to laugh at oneself is a certain kind of freedom, a superpower even, and that those moments of joy are priceless. Of course, we still had our lunchtime visits because, well, snacks, and Fortunately, V organized our homecoming float that year, and I think we actually won. 
plot twist again, COVID. This is where things become uncertain, a little different, and definitely weird. Things you had naturally envisioned for yourself had shifted, and the title of this chapter in your story could not have been foretold. Yet here you are. You are so very prepared for your next steps in a way no other graduating class in recent times has been. You know loss. You know challenging times. You know disappointment where everything is not what you imagined and that it's still going to be okay. You will manage, and in these times of loss, you will gain hero skills, patience, perseverance, and perspective. When you bump up against the next tough thing, your brain and your heart will remember that you have been there before and you at the very least will survive and maybe even thrive. You can hold your head high, emboldened with grit and with grace to not only meet that challenge, but come out on the other side braver and kinder because you know what struggle feels like, and you know that everyone has them, and you know that vulnerability takes strength and courage, and the collective power of empathy and compassion saves lives, and that's what we do. I thought my heart was going to burst so many times in the last few weeks as we celebrated you in our school, not only for your collective accomplishments, but also because I am so proud of who you are and what you stand for. It has been my great privilege to be a small part of your story. And you might want to be prepared when I show up in a later chapter, because you know I will, and you know I'll bring snacks. <sighs> As I open the first page of your award-winning yearbook and saw the words, you are the author of your own story, I realized you can't always just be the hero of my story. You get to continue to craft your own. You have a solid start. You are a mariner with a wheelhouse of life-saving, game-changing, playmaking skills. Remember what you taught me, that small gestures are the most important work we can do. Thank you for acknowledging me. Thank you for including me. Thank you for investing in me. Thank you for training up enough underclassmen to find my keys until I retire. And thank you for all the small gestures along the way that saved me. Please welcome Paul Story, Homer High counselor, as she shares the senior scholarships and awards. Well, Ms. Hudson, if you're an example of a messy brain, I would hate to hear what people say about me. I just want to say good evening. This is 
a really lovely day. A lot of people put a lot of work into. Um, congratulations, class of 2021, for all that you've been through. This is a pretty good send off in one of the most beautiful places on earth. You accomplished something. We expected this. We want every single ninth grader to get to this point. But just because we expected it does not mean it was easy. You did all the right things to get here. Congratulations. We want to take a moment in tonight's program to recognize some of these seniors who were awarded local scholarships. It can be a very competitive process. Uh, we say thank you to everyone who applied. You really are all deserving. We're also super lucky to live in the Southern Kenai Peninsula. This is one of the most generous communities I've ever seen. In fact, uh, Mr. O'Brien's predecessor was so taken aback about the amount of money towards scholarships from this community that he showed up at one of our scholarship award ceremonies to verify it was on the up and up. And it is on the up and up. So in addition to all the institutional awards that these graduates are receiving directly from their schools next year, just want to take a moment to recognize the winners of the awards and also the generous donors that make this possible. Um, it's not just big, rich, philanthropic organizations that do this. These are everyday people who are members of a nonprofit and want to dig deep to support the next step for this class of 2021. So um, if, when I read your name, if you could stand and remain standing, and then we'll hold our applause until the end. American Legion Auxiliary number 16, Kaya Dalkey. Beluga Tail Riding Scholarship, Zoe Stonarov, Eleanor Sweeney. The Children of Warriors, Liam Houlihan. The CIRCAC Scholarship, Austin Klein. Healthcare Providers Scholarship, Jessica Sonnen. Hill Corps Future Leaders of America, Austin Klein. Homer Community Science Award, Ty Etzweiler, Grace Godfrey. HEA Scholarship, Austin Klein, Jessica Sun, and Kara Super. Homer Elks Lodge, Zoe Stonaroff, Madison Story, Eleanor Sweeney, Brianna Wise. Homer Emblem Club Scholarship, Ayana Klein, Austin Klein, Haley Owen. Homer Emblem Club D. Door Memorial, Jessica Sunnen. Hornaday Music Award, Kara Super. Kachemak Bay Lions Club, Madison Story, Jessica Sunnen. Kachemak Rotary Club, Owen Glassman, Madison Story, Jessica Sunnen. Kenai Peninsula Administrators, Aron Toro. McNeil Canyon, Madison Story. Nikki Garagatelis Memorial Grace Godfrey. Sutton James Miller Award, Brianna Wise. Thelma and Ilsa Memorial Nursing, Jessica Sonnen. Alaska Peace Officer Scholarship, Caitlin Vogel. Don and Nina Pearson Oilers Booster Club, Harrison Metz. Luke Spruill Memorial Scholarship, Sadie Blake. Story Real Estate Scholarship, no relation. Lex Nodine, Dakota Moonin, DDF Black Hat, Eleanor Sweeney, Larry Dunn, Spirit of Community, Austin Klein, Hagen National Scholarship, Parker Lowney, May Sachansky, Liam Houlihan, Zoe Stonaroff, Coastal Realty Scholarship, Maya Hoglum, Ptarmigan Arts Visual Scholarship, Ella Blanton Yurkowski, Vianne Sarber, Homer Marine Trade Scholarship, Owen Glassman, Bill and Liz Don Johnson Teacher Education Scholarship, Madison Story, Drew Scalzi Memorial Maritime, Owen Glassman, Brianna Wise, Nursing Study, Brianna Wise, Fish and Wildlife Scholarship, Ty Etzweiler, Kachemak Bay Masonic Lodge, Ella Blanton Yurkowski, 
Kachemak Board of Realtors, Liam Houlihan, Maya Hoaglum, Ella blanton Yurkowski, Aleutian Harvester Memorial, Zoe Stoneroff, Owen Glassman, Alaska State Association of Emblem Clubs, Jessica Sonnen, National Merit Scholar Finalists, Jeremiah Bartell, Larry Dunn, UA Scholar Award recipients, Austin Klein, Brooke Miller, Grace Godfrey, Jessica Sonnen, Laura Inama, Larry Dunn, Madison Story, Vianne Sarber, Zoe Stoneroff. Let's give them a round of applause. You can go ahead and be seated. Did not have the time, Mr. O'Brien, to tally all the institutional awards. This whole situation took a minute, but I'm pretty sure when you add all the institutional awards as well as the ones that we just uh, congratulate these guys, it's gonna be over a million dollars. So awesome job and congrats. It's my honor to present to you the valedictorians of the class of 2021. This year, we have two valedictorians. At Homer High, it's not enough just to get a 4.0. In order to be a valedictorian, you must take all or most of the nine AP classes and ace them. For those who don't know, advanced placement classes can be tougher than college entrance classes. For doing that and taking an SAT style test at the end of the year, they get a .021 credit boost. These students have worked hard and earned this. Please join me in welcoming to the stage the valedictorians, Lawrence Dunn with a 4.336, and Austin Klein with a 4.315. They are a little bit different because he did, Larry took one AP class uh, online. It is our honor to deliver this address for the class of 2021. Before we start, on the behalf of our graduating class, we'd like to thank all of the parents, educators, administrative staff, and extracurricular coaches, and everyone else who has had an impact on our education and growth. Listing them all would take more time than I think has been allocated for our entire speech, but the guidance and support each of you has given us all has made a truly remarkable difference in all of our lives. To the senior class, we've been through a lot together. State champs at different points in skiing, debate, wrestling, hockey, volleyball, and cross country running. Hull decorations and Christmas tree thieving. Season ending injuries and life changing losses. Students spun tales of foxes, robots, and sci-fi superpowers. Awards, scholarships, acceptances in dream schools, and an astounding number of committed athletes. Many pep rally shenanigans for me, the jelly bean incident, trips and falls in costumes consisting of flippers to survival suits, and candy wrappers in the trash cans come to mind. Bleacher creatures and our other less boisterous fans. The affirmation homecoming parade weed bells. From dance battles to getting dropped at dances. Freshman fight club. The astounding amount of collective hours spent in the snow. And last, but not even remotely close to least, the legendary turkey video. 
And of course, we would be remiss not to bring up COVID in our speech for this particular class. The typical line might be that it was hard, but we came out stronger. And while that's true in a sense, a lot was lost. I don't need to remind you all of the missed activities, learning, and opportunities. Consequently, the importance of dialogue, especially at this particular point in time, cannot be overstated. Right now, structures and norms are changing, and less is static than has been in recent history. Rapid changes have been forced by the pandemic in areas previously unthinkable, sometimes for better, sometimes for much worse. Political currents of populism have been growing across the political spectrum. People do not agree on basic reality and feel more disconnected for, than ever from those with different views than them. And the sense that we are all in this together with different approaches to the same end goal is fading. I believe that just about everyone here knows the feeling that I'm talking about. This can only be solved through genuine and open dialogue between those of different persuasions and walks of life. Not debate in which we are attempting to win, but discussions in which we genuinely attempt to understand another point of view and critically examine our own. Growing up in Homer, we have had the opportunity to participate and be supported by a caring and illuminating community. For a town of 5,000 people, there is an amazing 440 nonprofits showing Homer's generosity and willingness to create solutions for existing problems. This community of ours, composed of radically different people and with fundamentally different beliefs, shows how old believer Russians, multiple native tribes, Olympians, wildlife biologists, and groundbreaking artists can coexist with fishermen, hunters, and homesteaders. This communal awareness has molded who we are today. As we continue our paths through life, I encourage each and every one of you to bring this sense of Homer with you. For as our community brings us together, it is what sets us apart. It's likely not controversial to say that our society at large is in a more chaotic state than it has been in recent memory. From this relative chaos, the goal should not be restoring the old order, it should be creating a new, better order. As we, the senior class, get older, we will naturally begin to see systems as unchangeable and eternal. But right now, as relatively young individuals, we have the gift of not being saddled with the baggage of decades of seeing the same structures and patterns, and therefore being better able to imagine a world which meaningfully changes them. Slovenian philosopher Slavoj Žižek said that, quote, the task of philosophy is not to provide answers, but to show how the way we perceive a problem can be itself part of a problem. If we want to meaningfully change the world, our burden is to do just that, to rethink the way we approach problems, question even the most basic structures in our society, and to dare to imagine a world truly different from the one we live in. Too often, the change we envision is reasonable. If change is considered reasonable, it definitionally maintains the status quo and stays within the confines of what already exists. We should not allow ourselves to be limited by what is, but rather what could be. As we leave high school, create independent lives, and become enfranchised members of society, the future is truly ours. As the generation just entering adulthood, we have the power and drive to meaningfully change systems and our communities if we choose to participate and choose to do so. I leave you with this. Hear new perspectives and genuinely listen. Don't be afraid to radically rethink the way we approach issues in a way that hasn't been done before. And most importantly, don't forget where you came from. May you have fair winds and following seas, soon to be Homer High alumni. Parents and guests, we do have professional photographers here taking pictures and they will be uh, 
available to you for free in a couple of days. Please stay in your seats as we award diplomas. Mr. Michael Ild, would you please come forward? As principal of Homer High School, I certify to you that the seniors seated before you today have met all the requirements of graduation as required by the Kenai Peninsula Borough School District. The staff and administration of Homer High School would ask that you approve these students to receive the diploma for all to see their new status as Homer High graduates. As board member of the Kenai Peninsula Borough School District, I acknowledge the achievement and the new status of the class of 2021 and approve them for graduation from Homer High School. Will the Homer High School class of 2021 please drive up or stand up and present themselves to receive their diplomas. You can drive up too, but. Austin Klein. Austin will be attending the Olin College of Engineering in Needham, Massachusetts, where he will study mechanical engineering and play soccer. Lawrence Dunn. Larry will be attending Yale University where he will be studying political science. Haley Alexander. Haley will be working around Homer while also taking college classes to become a mental health therapist. Jeremiah. Bartell. Jeremiah will be attending Western Washington University where he will study computer science. Melissa Baxter. Melissa will be attending UAA where she will be studying pre-law and political science. Clayton Beachy. Clayton plans on attending Lewis and Clark State College in Lewiston, Idaho, where he will be trying out for the basketball team. Adeline Berry. Addie will be attending the University of Alaska Fairbanks where she plans to study business administration and participate in swimming. Jack Black. Jack will be joining the United States Marine Corps. Mary Black. Mary will be attending Westchester University in Pennsylvania starting in the fall with the intent of going into pre-medicine. Sadie Blake. Sadie will be attending Dixie State University where she will wrestle on their wrestling team and study psychology. Ella blanton Yurkowski. Ella plans on attending the University of Hawaii 
to study business with a focus in healthcare management as well as art. Joshua Bradshaw. Josh will be working in Homer while taking online classes towards an engineering degree. Austin Ciccarelli. Austin will be taking college classes online through UAA and doing some guided hunts in Kodiak this fall. Ansel Chandler. Ansel will be attending Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University where he will study cyber intelligence and security. Ayana Klein. Ayana will be attending Santa Clara University in the fall where she will study business and continue to dance. Benjamin Coble. Ben will be taking some classes while working part-time. Kaya Dalkey. Kaya plans on attending KPC to get all her basic classes out of the way and then transfer to a different college and study foreign language. Harmony Davidson. Harmony plans to attend esthetician school and pursue esthetics and cosmetology. Stella. Die. Stella will be returning to Homer High School and looking forward to assisting in classrooms at other local schools. Ty Etzweiler. Ty will be attending the College of Southern Idaho for two years and then transfer to the University of Hawaii Hilo to receive his bachelor's in applied science. Davin Faulkner. Davin will attend the next, sorry, Davin will take the next year off from general schooling and then look at getting a part-time job. Owen Glassman. Owen will be attending Cal Maritime where he will study marine transportation. Anna Godfrey. Anna will be rowing for the Oregon State University women's crew team while also studying biology with, with a focus in pre-med and planning to go into orthopedics. Grace Godfrey. Grace will be attending the University of Alaska Anchorage where she will be studying biology. Ann Graham. Ann will spend the summer in Colorado and then look into a welding profession possibly in the future. Bruce Graham. Bruce the Lion God will be interviewing soon with Coach Zank for an assistant coaching role with the Mariner wrestling team. Mariah Grimes. Mariah will be taking classes in Homer to work towards going out of state to become an attorney.
Angelica Hawkinson. Angelica will be deferring her enrollment at the University of Utah for a year and volunteer at AmeriCorps. Spencer Hinnigan, a.k.a. Big Poppy. Spencer plans to work in the community and aspires to open a local game store. Maya Hoglum. Maya will be attending the College of St. Scholastica in Duluth, Mount Minnesota, where she will study to become a physical therapist. Liam Houlihan. Liam will be attending Cal Maritime in Vallejo, California for a bachelor's in mechanical engineering. Cade Rancher. Cade will be working towards a tattooing apprenticeship. Laura Inama. Laura will be attending the University of Mary to obtain a medical imaging degree while also running track and field. Mackenzie Johnson. Mackenzie is planning to attend Hawaii Pacific University to study environmental science and global studies. Paige Jones. Paige plans to attend the IBS School of Cosmetology in Maui in order to become an esthetician. Riley Jones. Riley will be working in Homer and looks to build a career in the marine trades. Piper Kasuni. Piper will be attending Western Washington University to study business and languages. Maya Kelly. Maya will be attending MSU for film directing. Bergen Knudsen. Bergen will be taking a gap year to work and get a pilot's license. Then he looks forward to attending Montana State for mechanical engineering. Xander Kolhanik. Xander will be attending Western Washington University and working towards a degree in computer engineering. Christopher Landis. Chris plans on working in Homer while taking core classes at KPC. Sam Larson. Sam will be attending the University of Alaska Fairbanks, where he'll be studying mechanical engineering with a minor in mathematics.
Gabriel LeBlanc. Gabe plans on attending WyoTech in Laramie, Wyoming, where he'll be taking diesel and advanced diesel courses. Parker Lowney. Parker plans on attending the University of Hawaii at Hilo and will be studying marine science. River Man. River is going to be working around Homer this next year, saving money and looking forward to traveling and ultimately getting the heck out of Homer. Joshua Manwiller. Josh plans to attend Dort University to study biology and play on their football team. Harrison Metz. Harrison will be going to Valley City State University. He will study software engineering and play baseball. Emily Milam. After school, Emily plans to work, travel, settle down, and get married. Brooke Miller. Brooke will be attending Colorado Mesa University where she will major in nursing and run on the track and field team. Dakota Moonen. Dakota plans on going to Avtech in Seward and enroll in their welding program. Andrew Nelson. Andy will be working in Homer and continuing to search for that perfect college. Lex Nodine. Lex will be attending Avtech in Seward where he will study culinary arts. Lance Parkinson. Lance will be returning to Homer High School next year to continue working on vocational and independent living skills. Riley Post. Riley plans to work around Homer next year and save money to attend an Alaska trade school like Avtech. Tanner Reed. Tanner plans to attend the University of Hilo in Hawaii and study marine biology. Tristan Romerol. Tristan will be going on a religious religious mission for two years in the Chicago area. Vianne Sarber. Vianne will be pursuing her artistic and business centered interests eventually planning to attend RIT in Rochester, New York. Olivia Scott.
Olivia will be working, living, and going to college at Whatcom Community College in Washington to get her associate's degree. Tyson Schaefer. Tyson plans on dredging in the state this summer and then becoming a pipe layer in Colorado this fall. Tonda Smoody. Tonda is going to enlist in the Coast Guard in September and become an electrician's mate. Jessica Sonnen. Jessica is attending Simpson University in California where she will be studying nursing and play soccer. Brianna Stiles. Brianna will be attending Spokane Community College and pursue a, pursue a degree in art. Zoe Stonerov. Zoe will be attending Bowdoin College in Brunswick, Maine. Madison Story. Madison will be swimming for the University of Utah and majoring in elementary education. Jack Stridham. Jack is attending the Ketchumac Bay campus to earn his undergraduate degree, then transfer to Washington or Oregon. Kara Super. Kara will be attending the University of Alaska Fairbanks where she will pursue a business major. Eleanor Sweeney. Eleanor plans to attend St. Mary's College in Notre Dame, Indiana, where she will pursue a degree in psychology and autism spectrum studies. Lillian Sweeney. Lillian will also attend St. Mary's College, St. Mary's College to study mathematics and science for pre-med. Charles Tappan. Charlie will be attending Southern Utah University for nursing. Peyton Tobin. Peyton will be attending University of Alaska Fairbanks to study computer engineering. Aron Toro. Aron will be headed to the University of Alaska Fairbanks this fall. Rhodes Turner. Rhodes plans to become a year-round commercial fisherman. Makana Vasea. Makana will be working around Homer while also preparing to take college classes to become a teacher. Caitlin Vogel.
Caitlin will be going to the University of Hawaii at Manoa, where she will be studying criminology. Phineas Weston. Finney plans to live in Colorado and take online classes. Carl Wickstrom. Carl plans to become an EMT, probably starting in Homer before moving out of state. Emmett Wilkinson. Emmett will be attending the University of Utah in Salt Lake City. Brianna Wise. Brianna will be attending the University of Alaska Southeast in Juneau, where she will study nursing and sign language. Coda Wood. Coda plans to live in Homer, work and take some classes at the local college. David Wild. Zach will be working in order to save money to travel and later attending Alaska Pacific University. Caitlin Ingelbritson. Caitlin is a planning on joining YWAM in Kona and then attend the Montana State for Wildlife Management. Hannah Hatfield. Hannah plans on attending Dixie State in St. George, Utah to pursue a degree in dental hygiene. Kira Milne. Kira is planning on taking this opportunity of graduating a year early to take a gap year and explore Hawaii. Haley Owen. Haley will be attending Johnson and Wales University in Providence, Rhode Island to study biology and play hockey. I have a couple announcements before the final presentation of the class. First, I would like to say thanks to the sound crew from Church on the Rock for volunteering their time and support. They are awesome, and we couldn't do it without them. Please give them a round of applause. We would also like to thank the city of Homer, Chief Roble, and Chief Kirko at the Homer Fire and Police Departments for supporting our senior parade. Graduates, as a reminder, teachers leave first. We ask that you please pass through the 2021 on my left and process out and go to your cars. You are welcome to return to the arch or the stage for picture afterwards. And now, graduates, please rise. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor to present to you the Homer High School Class of 2021. 